This is where food and football fever collide. Join me as I teach you food and drink fans around the world are eating while they watch the beautiful game. Here are four iconic dishes from countries playing in Brazil. As you can see, I'm a fan of the Netherlands. My Oma and Opa came to Canada and they brought with them my mom in my uh, Oma's tummy. And uh, 13 children later, I'm a fan of the Dutch. What I'm gonna make for you today is a common street food, kibbling. It's simply battered fish, but it's not simple flavored. With this spice mix we're gonna put together and this nice creamy sauce, it's gonna have you coming back again and again during the game. And that's one of the things I like about this dish is you can serve a large group of people very quickly and make a lot of people happy. First thing we're gonna do, so I've got some pollock here, beautiful white fish, you can use anything. Here on Lake Erie, I might use pickerel, you can use cod. Originally, it was done with cod cheeks. Cod cheeks are gorgeous, but if you can get cod cheeks, any white fish will work. Let's start throwing together the batter. Very simply, we've got some unbleached white flour, milk, and a couple eggs. So I've got some farm fresh eggs. And some salt. Again, we want to make sure we season at all levels. What that means is that we just don't have to add a lot of salt after the fact. And I'm just going to bring this together. You know, it doesn't have to be like, uh, it doesn't have to be really smooth. The texture should be, uh, it should be well brought together, but again, it does not have to be uh, completely smooth. And the thing that makes this so great, now that I've got that, is I'm gonna add a little bit of beer and uh, give it light texture, and that's really what you want. There we go. Perfect. I'm just gonna push this up here and just set it aside for a moment. And what we'll do is we'll throw together this spice mixture. So I've got a mortar and pestle, and I'm gonna dump in, I've got fennel greek, and mustard seed, coriander, which I love. Now these are all whole seeds and I've lightly toasted them. When you toast seeds, you bring out some of the essential oils and intensify the flavors, makes it just awesome. So I'm gonna bring these together and I just wanna, you know, I don't wanna make a, a complete powder out of them because again, I'm looking for texture. It's one of the things we'll talk about again and again, you'll hear me say, is that when we're building flavors, oh man, I'm getting the, a cloud of spices coming up here. When you're building flavors, what you want is you want different kinds of texture. Of course, we, we eat, uh, uh, there's aroma and there's taste, but there's that texture that's in our mouth as well. So I'm gonna take a spoonful of this seed, a couple spoonfuls, so be a couple tablespoons, and then I've just got some things to dump. So I've got some ground rosemary. I've got some white pepper. I've got some fresh ground nutmeg, which is really fragrant. I've got some uh, ginger, which will give me a little bit of heat. Salt, and lastly, I've got some ground thyme. And I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a stir. And what you see here is a really nice combination of spices that are both hot and salty and a little bit sweet and very fragrant. And what it does is as soon as you drop it on that deep fried fish, it just literally comes to life. And it just gives it another layer of flavor that really makes the enjoyment of this dish so much better. I've, uh, I've got a couple visual cues here. This was my, my Oma's. She served so many people when she was uh, back in the old country. And this is just a nod to her, uh, God bless her. I uh, love her and miss her, and, uh, and you know, that's one of the great things about uh, this football fever is that it brings together the world in a way that, uh, you know, that's kind of unexpected and awesome. And it makes us think about other countries and how we can all come together over something as simple as a soccer ball and, uh, and make great things happen. So now to the dipping sauce. I've got a uh, little robo-coup here. And I'm just gonna put together a couple spices. I've got a tiny, I'm gonna put about a tablespoon of paprika. Paprika is smoky. And I'm gonna make, a, get a little bit of cayenne, so I want a little bit of heat. Now I've got mayonnaise. And just before that, this is kind of exciting, I like this. So I'm gonna put some pickles in here. 
two dills, and I've got these cute little uh, pickled onions and some gherkins. You can even add some of the, uh, the pickle juice if you'd like. I'm gonna put in some fresh lemon zest. Every time you're using a lemon, you should always use the lemon zest. You have lemon, you know, you have acidity from the juice, but you just don't get that bright lemon flavor. So as this goes in, that's perfect. I'm just gonna slice this in half, and I want a little bit of the acidity as well. So I'm gonna give it a light squeeze, make sure I don't get any seeds in there. Perfect. And just before I put the mayonnaise in, oh, and this one, this one came out of my garden. Look at this. Got this beautiful lemon thyme with the blossoms on. So again, you could use fresh basil, tarragon, any of your favorites, anything to brighten it up. Again, we wanna make sure that we balance. So the mayonnaise is a little bit fatty, so we wanna add a little bit of heat. And in this case, we wanna add a little bit of brightness, and that's exactly what this uh, beautiful, especially, and flowers and all, by the way, that's what this uh, little herb is gonna do. Oh, man, smell already. I mean, just have a quick look inside there. That is flavor, I'm telling you, that is flavor. So I'm gonna give this a quick blitz before I put the mayonnaise in. Perfect. Now, mayo in. And I like it to have a little bit of texture. I don't want it to be all a puree. Again, I you know, wanna make sure it, uh, it's got great flavor, but uh, at the same time, we wanna make sure that there's, uh, there's texture there as well. We'll finish bringing that together. I'm just gonna press down the sides lightly. Oh man, you should smell this. I wish you could smell this. I want you to make this at home. This is a challenge to you to make really simple food, but make it from scratch. Make simple food, but make it quick. Perfect. Now you've made a fresh sauce and look at the results. I'm just gonna put this in our little serving dish here. Grab a spoon. I know I had a spoon here. There's my spoon, perfect. And look at this. Look at the texture. Oh, and the smell. And of course, you know, with uh, deep fried anything, you need something with a little bit of punch in order to bring it up a little bit. Now I've got my deep fryer on at uh, 375 degrees. Just take the lid off here again. Lots of caution with the deep fryer. Want to make sure that uh, there's no kids around. Make sure that you're well prepared. Here I've got uh, all of the Pollock already portioned. And this is one of the things about kibbling is that it is, you know, it's the end cuts. It was originally done and meant to use up the, what's kind of left over, you know, not the, not the finest cuts. So it's an inexpensive way to really enjoy fish. I'm just gonna literally dump these all in. And then just for safety, even though as a chef, I likely would not use tongs, that doesn't matter. What I, the reason I'm doing this is because at home, I want you to approach this with some real confidence. I want you to feel comfortable with the deep fryer. Um, you know, it, and it's important to get an appliance deep fryer because you know, over the stove, sometimes you know, it's very easy for it to light up and I, I'd hate for that to, to happen. So just make sure that you're very cautious when you're deep frying. So I'm gonna drop this basket down and what you'll see is a slight wave. So we'll call it the kibbling wave. But this is what should be done whenever you're deep frying. You wanna give a little bit of a wave and what happens is it starts to aerate a little bit and what happens is it won't stick to the bottom. So we're gonna just keep dropping a few of these in and what we're looking for is for it to float. And when it floats, we know that it's close to being finished. Again, that little bit of a wave and then a release. And what happens is it floats, won't stick to the bottom of your basket. And I don't know, you can see that developing there already. What's happened is that beer is causing it to aerate nicely. Perfect. This last batch is just about ready. One of the things that you'll notice is that occasionally you may need to turn them. They float and then you need to turn them over just to finish that up. But you can see that absolutely gorgeous golden brown. And as I pull them out, I'm gonna put them directly on a plate to drain. Wanna make sure we get off all that excess oil. There's nothing more unpleasant than, a, than greasy fish. But you can see how puffed up that is. 
how incredibly crisp that texture is. And it's, uh, it's really gonna be great with this spice. Now look, have a look at this. Let's take a little bit of this spice and we'll just apply it right now. Important to apply the spice or any seasoning while the batter is hot. What's gonna happen is some of that spice is gonna melt right down in and, uh, and then you won't, it won't be falling off and you can really enjoy it. Now, I'm gonna take a little bite of this. We've got this, see that great little angular piece there? Perfect for hooking and dipping. Put it right in the sauce. It smells incredible. Oh, I mean the texture is perfect. Listen, if you're a fan of football and a fan of food, this is where food and football collide. I'm telling you right now, Go Netherlands, go. Have a great game, and thanks for joining me.